Let's uh, talk about your new album. Uh, Tom Petty uh, produced it for you. That's right. How did uh, you two get together? Well, I got together uh, through Harvey Kubernick, who works, uh, he worked for MCA Records, and he thought that it would be a great idea if Tom Petty produced me. Well, my manager called me, and I was getting ready to go to Nashville to cut some things, and he said, Tom Petty wants to produce you, and I said, well, send out one of his albums. I've heard of Tom Petty, but not, never got into his music. I'm talking three years ago now. Mm -hmm. And when I heard uh, Listen to Your Heart, I said, wow, those great rock and roll guitars. Uh, we had a meeting the next day, and he said, what you going to do down in Nashville? You can go there when you're 60 years old, man. You're a rocker. you got to rock. <laughs> so that's all I really needed to hear, you know, is, uh, is another rocker saying you got to rock. So uh, mm -hmm. that's how it all happened. You know, it took, we were about 30 days in the studio, but it took about two and a half years to make the album because of the fact he was on the road. Uh, his album took off, and I went to Australia, then he went to Australia, and I came back. We just couldn't cross each other's path, you know? Mm -hmm. It seems a lot of the people, too, whose roots are back in 50s and 60s rock and roll, many performers have uh, moved into the country area as the years have gone by because there is a definite connection there. It's but true. Uh, but uh, it's interesting to hear you say that about uh, being a rocker. Yeah, that's what he said, and he was right. You know, I had to wake up to the fact that I am a rocker. I've been rocking all my life. I love rock and roll. I grew up with it. And to, to uh, I wasn't really going to leave it. I just, someone called me a few years ago and said, you ought to do Runaway Disco. And I said, that's it. <laughs> what are they trying to do to me? I'm not going to do that. I'm, I will not do that. Uh, yeah. So uh, I didn't, and I started to write country songs, and I had some pretty good country songs, but uh, which we didn't use on the album. Mm -hmm. The only song that I played in the day we met, uh, Tom was uh, Drop Down and Get Me. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's the only song. Then I, and I'm glad it took so long to make the album, because it gave me a lot of time to write. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I had to start writing a whole new album, you know. And uh, I found that I could still write, uh, and could still... Uh, Get it on, you know. You do some great covers too, "Out of Time" and "Sea of Love." Yeah, "Sea of Love" is is a is a hit uh, in the United States now, mm -hmm. and uh, it's great to have that. Yeah, I did that song in '77 for uh, Island Records, and it was never released. It just didn't make it. You know, we tried in three different countries to make that a hit record, as far as recording it, and we put everything with the kitchen sink on it, and it didn't make it. And when Tom heard it. Uh, we got just the kind of record I wanted in 77. Mm -hmm. uh, it was just simple and laid back and not a lot of stuff on it. I was speaking recently with Niels Lofgren about his Night Fades Away and you're helping him with I Go to Pieces. That's right. And uh, could you give us a little bit of the history on that song, I Go to Pieces, uh, when you wrote it and, and how it came to be that Peter and Gordon, of all people, performed it and had the hit with it? Right. I wrote that song. I actually probably wrote it for myself. But then when I wrote the song, I played it for one of my producers, and he said, that song's not for you right now. I had to keep searching in the in the can there. Mm -hmm. uh, so I said, well, I got this singer I know in Battle Creek, Michigan, where I started out playing music, and he's still back in the clubs. I think I'll go look him up and produce him with it, because he's a good singer, and uh, he's very appealing. He was a black man. Mm -hmm. So I flew him to New York and recorded him, and I tried everything in my power to get someone to release it, and no one would release the master. Uh, they all liked the song, but they didn't like his delivering of the song, and maybe it was my production, I don't know. Mm -hmm. So I took it on tour to Australia, and I was with Peter and Gordon on tour, and I said, in Australia, and I said, Peter, I've got this artist, what do you think of him? And he said, oh, I love the song, could we do it? And I said, you might as well, because nobody else is going to do it, it looks like. So he took the song, and about three months later, my manager called me, played it for me over the phone, and it was, I go to pieces, and I said, great. <laughs> so that's how that happened. When I see her coming down the street, I get so shaky and I feel so weak. I tell my eyes look the other way, but they don't seem to hear a word I say, and I...
little town first Hats off to Larry It may sound true But you laughed at me When you said we were through You told me lies But you're turning to Now that Larry said goodbye to you This is The New Age and our guest Gail Shannon. Here's more on I Go to Pieces. When I wrote the song Going Under a Bridge in Detroit, when I was uh, left the studio down there in Detroit, mm-hmm. went under a bridge, heard a Motown song, and thought I heard I Go to Pieces, and I said, gee, what a great title. And I, you know, you go under a bridge, the radio fades out. You know, <laughs> And I got out of the other end of the bridge, and they weren't singing I Go to Pieces at all. Uh, I don't know what they were singing. Right. And I just wrote the idea down, went home and wrote the song. Those days in the early 60s and that string of hits you had, was that a very exciting time for you, I imagine? Well, it was very exciting, but it's more exciting now. Now I can sit back and enjoy it. In those days, it was singles. Everything was a single, and uh, right now I'd be contemplating going in the studio, coming up with another single. Mm-hmm. Rather than now, I've got another year probably before I have to be in the studio to write some more things. I can take my time, because now we go in, now I think we've got a couple singles off that album. Mm-hmm. And uh, and you can take your time. On those days, my manager would say, "Okay, now you're you got a, a hit record. Now go in and write another one." So while I was on tour, I couldn't enjoy any cities. I would be in the room writing another song, trying to come up with another single, uh, because you were in and out, in and out of the studio. Today, I won't be in the studio probably for nine or eight, nine or ten months. Mm-hmm. It gives me tons of time to write uh, the next single and and the next album. Because in those days, we didn't concentrate much on albums. That's right, yeah, yeah. And now today it's an albums and singles market, and I love it. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So it was exciting, of course, but it wasn't like I thought it would be. No. I didn't think, to, you know, when I was in Battle Creek, Michigan, thumping my guitar in clubs, and the next day I'm in Broadway at the, uh, you know, it was an amazing change for me, mm-hmm. and I didn't know what I was doing. It was all screaming kids, and I was used to bar people and fights and all that, and uh, screaming <laughs> kids and hollering and ripping your clothes and wanting autographs. I said, what am I doing here? <laughs> I mean, it was a total freak out, you know. Yeah, yeah. And uh, so I was a, a bit of fear mixed in with it. But today, uh, I can accept the, uh, the success and love it. You know, I can just sit back and really enjoy it. That's good, that's good. So it sounds like it's a much less uh, pressure situation these days. Then. Absolutely, because I know I have a, a great manager today. I have the right company. I know I have the right contract. I don't have to sit here and say, what did I sign? Because I did have a pretty bad contract, mm-hmm. as a lot of artists did in those days, and I had to fight for that. Uh, I had to go to court, you know, two years in court. You know, it's just awful. So today I don't have to do those things because I know the right people to get. I know the right lawyers, and, you know, I do have that experience. Mm-hmm. How much touring do you do in a year nowadays? Well, let's take it back to two years ago i was touring maybe six weeks of the year Mm -hmm. uh last year i probably toured five no i've toured probably about seven days is all i worked last year because i had my own publishing now and i waited for tom to come in and out of town Uh, anytime he'd come in he'd say let's get together and i'd say oh i'm ready man and we'd go i had to play myself around his schedule so i just didn't work Mm-hmm. Uh, I just took time off waiting for him to come in so I could finish this album. I knew it was going to be okay. I thought it would would be good. And the company believed in me. So we just waited. Mm-hmm. And uh, previous to that, the last tour I did was six, five weeks in Australia. That was a year and a half ago. You have quite a following there, don't you? Yes, and in Europe and Germany and uh, mainly England. And uh, I enjoy working places like Canada. I like working Canada. I've always liked working there. I liked working America, but my favorite places, I think, are Australia and England and Europe. But I'm getting to like it here again. I've got my own band here, which I've never had my own band here. I've always had an English band, an Australian band. Mm. But I never had a band here because of the, uh, from here, t- I lived in California, and my most of my work would be in New York, Boston, uh, Chicago area, mm. or even Canada, Toronto area, mm-hmm. uh, in those areas. So I didn't really have my own band here until now and now it's really exciting you're right it is totally exciting to have my own band now, i will leave here on friday i will pop in uh to san francisco at two o'clock i'll go to band rehearsal my band will be there my road people will be there and i'll be just ready to rock good good 
Back in the early 60s, were you ever involved in any of those caravan of stars where about 10 acts would go on the road all together? I was with Dick Clark two days ago. Mm -hmm. we did, uh, I did his show, and uh, it brought back a lot of memories. Yeah. Yeah, that's, I guess, when Tom Petty first saw me. Uh, he was in an audience in Florida. I guess it was most likely a Dick Clark caravan tour. Those are all Dick's tours, and Dick was a very clever man in those days. He would sign somebody up that was just coming on the charts, get him for a real... He signed, i got to tell you a story, he signed Herman and the Hermits when they had two just-coming-on records. By the end of the tour, he signed him for like six weeks or seven, eight weeks. At the end of the tour, he got him real cheap. At the end of the tour, I think they had three in the top ten. <laughs> Clark, businessman, is Dick Clark. Foresight, yeah. Yeah, he sure did. Yeah. Okay, so this album is doing very well, Drop Down and Get Me, and it's a fine album, too. And you have the heart, the Heartbreakers are helping out, too, aren't they? The Heartbreakers are backing me on this. Some of my band are on it, but mostly it's the Heartbreakers. Mm -hmm. And Tom is playing a little bit of uh, uh, harmonica, and he didn't play any guitar on it. Mm -hmm. uh, he just didn't want to play on it, I don't think. He just wanted to produce it. Yeah. He does a little talking like, well, good morning. <laughs> he does that on it. And he rang the bells before the uh, midnight train. Ding, ding, ding. He rings the bell. <laughs> I know you've been asked this a million times, but do you ever get tired of singing Runaway for the millionth time? No. No? I really don't. I'm glad that I can sing it. I'm glad that it was a success for me, and uh, it took me out of doing things I didn't want to do. Mm -hmm. I mean, I worked in factories. I sold carpets. Uh, I did all those things I didn't want to do, and uh, that Runaway took me out of that, and it brought me other successes. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, we wish you'd continued success in the future. Uh, thank you, John. Okay, then. Rock on. Bye. Del Shannon has been our guest on The New Age. The New Age continues. This is CFMI 101.